to this episode of The Grow Show. Now, I am here with a living legend. He is the person behind DJK Entertainment Limited. I've known him for a couple of years. He is an absolute, he's just so inspirational, so golden. And he's really, really cool. And he celebrated his birthday yesterday. So welcome to the show, Ben Kelly. How are you doing, sir? Thank you, mate. Uh, I'm actually really, really good. And as you said, it was my birthday yesterday, which is even better. But I'm actually, I'm actually feeling really, really good in in times that are uh, very un- uncertain. But I'm actually quite uh, relaxed and chilled and waiting for the the other side of this. Brilliant. So, for the people who don't know what BJK Entertainment did before lockdown, tell us a little bit, bit, bit about it. So, BJK Entertainment Limited, we do uh, children's parties, parties for adults, weddings, corporate events, and charity events too. Uh, so, that's effectively, if you want a party, you come to me, and I will DJ at your event your special occasion not a problem at all but also if you want uh, a singer a band uh, any kind of entertainment live entertainment i i will happily sort that out for you um on top of that um there's like equipment hire etc etc which i'm going to be l- launching more of after the lockdown cool so i'm guessing lockdown has not been very kind for your business it t- totally totally stopped it literally as soon as we came into lockdown i think it was the 23rd of march or something my business literally they just took a rug under my feet and literally uh, income went right down to zero wow <laughs> it's big you've heard you know people hear about it but they don't Let's see, see the people behind the business. Um, Absolutely. You know, were you ex- how did you deal with that? Were you expecting it? Was I expecting it? Well, we're obviously not, you know, four weeks out, but the general kind of, the way the lay, lay of land was kind of going, kind of, did you have it in mind that you might have to do it? But... No, not at all. 23rd of March, I think it was. I was like, yeah, okay, coronavirus, something's out there, something affecting people the way it is. Obviously, we've learned more as we go along. Mm -hmm. And I have thought, that's okay. It won't hit me. Everybody's probably thought, thought that. And then it got worse, and it got worse, and it got worse. And then the government shut the country down, effectively. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then because I'm in the entertainment industry, because of the the way that my business runs, I can't do anything. Right. Absolutely nothing at all. The only thing that I can do now, effectively, is plan for after. And we'll go on to that. We'll go on to that in a bit. Um, no, no, of course, yeah, so but that because... is effectively all I can do. It's yeah, literally, I've got nothing to do at all. I can't even. Um, I, I, I literally, if I if if you were asked me for a party, a party next week, not allowed to. All the pubs and clubs and everywhere that we will hold it, I shut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So biggie, so biggie. So we'll talk about really? plans, kind of later on um but before we do that kind of tell us a little bit about your journey um and how how did it all kind of come about yeah so um i am disabled i've got spine the bifida hydrocephalus uh which is water on the brain and spine the bifida is uh your two uh, your your spine is is uh, made of, of two columns basically and they knit together to make you your spine. Effectively, mine is broken. Uh, so there's 
the messages don't get to the brain to move parts of your body, for example. This is very layman's terms. Mm. Uh, just in case, I don't know who, who your listeners are and stuff. Um, so that is where my disability starts from. But, but my business journey starts from, um, I went to a, an all-disabled college and I was on the student union for the, mm -hmm. um, for the college for, for the last, I think it was the last year of my years there. And I was given a budget that, that, that I think it was like um, 150, 200 pound a month to do all the kinds of entertainment that they needed within that college mm -hmm. from a month. I don't know the exact figure, but that's about it. Yeah. And it obviously didn't stretch because now, me, or I know I'm quite cheap um, as a DJ now. Mm -hmm. But for what I charge now, mm -hmm. would be worth it is about 150 quid to 200 quid. Yeah. That with their budget would do one week. What What are the kids going to do for the rest of the month? Of the, of the month? Yeah. That's one night. So I took it back to the uh, to the to the principal. I said, "That's just a laugh, not a chance in hell for it to be that low." I need something like a thousand pound a month. Mm -hmm. So I I thought, you know what? I'm going to take this on my own head. I went back to her. I told her to double. I told her to triple the budget. Give me the money. I I will buy D, D, I will buy DJ equipment, and I I will be the resident D, DJ for the college. Mm -hmm. So I did. I did that. Everybody loved it. And then I thought, right, well, I need that. That's great. I know what I'll do. I'll charge people a fiver to get in, recoup the money back, and give it back to the president of the college. And then I'm like, I've got a great business model. Cause, and then I've got, I, I then can build up cost uh, money for future events or future things that we want to do and things like that. Hmm. Absolutely, the, the college had a budget for that. But I thought, well, if I can do it within the student union, it, 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 it's a win-win. Hmm. Now, the thing that I really, really, um, it frustrated me and I could get out, I, I was on... The college is National Star College in Cheltenham. And it's built in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of fields and stuff. Beautiful scenery and everything. It really is nice. And it really is a centre of excellence. I'm not knocking it at all. But the problem is, is the people that are living on site don't have the ability to get into town because you've got to jump on a bus, which was running once or twice a week at the time, or jump in a taxi, which cost the ten of each way to get to town. Yeah. So I was the only source of entertainment. So I put on a, a disco every Friday or Saturday night throughout the year, and people paid the fiver to get in, and I would play their, their favourite songs and, you know, the typical nightclub-y situation, but on the college, mm. on the college grounds in the sports hall. And people loved it. When you see somebody who isn't meant to, to who, who is medically not meant to walk, talk, or, or communicate, suddenly you see them, their face light up and, and they're jumping for joy, 
in their in their chair that they're not meant to be moving out of. What what is that all about? It's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? That is, that's that's mind blowing moment. It's crazy. I was just like, I seen a little spark, and I was like, you know what? I want that. And then I left college and I, I went to the Prince's Trust, and I uh, basically did a bit of DJing with them for course to learn how to DJ properly. Um, that they also put me on the enterprise course, which gave me the business gave me the business acumen how to run a business properly. And they also gave me a loan. At, uh, to start my business off uh, alone or a grant, I can't remember which, but mm. it was two grand, to, uh, two grand to get me going, and that got me going seven years ago this year. Because now we're in twenty twenty, aren't we? So yeah. Um. So that was brilliant. That got me on the on the straight and narrow. That got me some some money behind me. And I obviously started with friends and family and bits and pieces. And the one thing that I love now is when when you do kids' parties, when you do weddings, they come and thank you. Money to me is nothing. It really isn't nothing. We need mm. to be paid for what we do. But if if I get a thank you, that's worth a thousand pound or more. It really is. And we've had this conversation before, haven't we? Like this because we're both on the same page that if we could do it all for free for everybody, yeah, we'll do it. Uh, because you know, well, I feel like actually once what what was your why? And you said I want to make people happy. I want to see them smile. You know, yeah. And it comes across. It comes across like that. Yeah, absolutely. If I've got a five-year-old kid that comes up and, and hugs me and says thank you, I've done my job. Especially because I'm, you, you know, because we, cause we, we, we're friends, but I'm a wheelchair user. And for a shy kid to overcome the shyness and come up to you at the end and say thank you, it, it's what it's what you need. It's it's not what you need. It's what you want because that kid at the start really is holding himself back. And and there is ways that I get around that that I'll tell you later. I'm sure that there's a question that around that. Um, do you know, let's answer it now. You know, kind of. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's go on to that question in a second. So, yeah. in terms of kind of the last seven years, let's focus on the business a little bit more. How has that? How's your business changed over the last seven years? A bar. Oh, okay. Up until February. Oh, sorry, March the twenty third. Right. Okay. So it was to start with. It was me and <laughs> my driver, and I'm not going to lie. I I'm very reliant on that driver because I'm in a wheelchair. I can't set up and things. Um, so in the start, it was very much based on their availability. Can they help? Can they do it? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Change that mindset now. Of uh, now, it's right. I need you on this. That I've got a booking. You know, you, you need to help me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the so I've got I've got this booking I'll put it to them it's like I need this filling can you do it yes no great awesome the guy that I, I work with now gets the mindset gets the gets the um the, 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 the he's got business acumen he's actually in a band himself so he he gets the the, the business act, uh, the business sense. Mm. He, he he's got the 
the, the, the responsibility to go, actually, yes, I don't want to let you down. Because if he lets me down, I let them down. And he's just so much more reliable. But how the actual business has, has progressed is I used to only do uh, parties for, for adults and weddings. Mm-hmm. I then realised actually there's so much more fun in kids' parties. So I added that. And I, I love the, the kids' parties because I, I get to be a big kid myself. <laughs> um, but how I really, I suppose, how I really started to build the business and build the following is um, the, the, the charity events. I used to do charity events totally free. I used to take the hit myself to get there with the petrol, etc., etc., just for exposure. Mm-hmm. It it's bizarre, and a lot of people um, disagree with it, etc. But it's a business. I'm not a charity. No. I help charity, but I'm not a charity. So now I have. A base. Now I have a charity rate, so I charge what I charge for my other services, but I will have a lower rate for charity, and it is for the same amount of hours, etc. But it's just what it's basically cost price. Effect. Yeah, and it fits it's into your why still. It fits into your why. You're still helping people, and you're still giving them the giving them access to the full abilities that you can offer. Absolutely. I would also, to add more value, because it's all about adding value, I would also throw a £50 voucher into their raffle. So I charge X, and then and then they get a raffle prize worth mm-hmm. on top. So yeah. effectively, you're you're balancing that out effectively. I love it. I love it. Nothing stops you, does it? I just find ways of... You put a barrier in front of me. I've got this, the mindset that I want to get through the, the barrier. Hmm. Yeah, no. I, I don't want to bring the podcast feeling down, but I've had lots of ups and turns and I've nearly died like I think it's like nearly 10 times now maybe more throughout my whole life I've, I've had 24 brain operations um, when it hits the fan you you start to realise actually there's so much more to life and when you've got that mindset you get around any challenge you really do. And this is why I called you an inspiration right at the start. Because your mindset, the way you can focus, the way that you can come up with ideas around different ways of kind of doing that. Yeah. It puts you ahead of so many people and we can learn any we can learn just by listening to this podcast some really important not just business lessons but life lessons as well. So I want to thank you for that because it's really important for people to hear that. And you mentioned about bringing the podcast down and I don't think it does. I think that gives relevance to you. And actually that shows people this is where you are and this is what you're still doing after all that. Um, And one thing that I would love to do is kind of bust some preconceptions here because you are an example of someone who is running a business who has a full life, yeah. but you still have a disability. Um, you know, if you don't mind me asking, you know, has that always been the case? Or, you know, if you don't want to answer, please tell me to shut up. I'm more than happy to. No, no, I, I will. The thing is with me is I've been through so much stuff in my life. If I was, in my opinion, I'm not saying everybody is, 
and it's probably the wrong word, but if I'm arrogant enough to go, no, I won't answer that, I haven't done my job properly, my hypothetical job. I have been through what I've been through, so why don't I educate? Why can't I educate? So seriously, any question you've got around what you need to ask in terms of my disability and what I've been through, well, I, from my, yeah, I'm totally open. Well, from my point of view, um, people, it's it's going around to, to that that boy who comes up to you for a hug. Yeah. You know, some people might well have a preconception. Actually, why would I do that? Or he, yeah. the boy might be a bit, hey, might be a bit afraid to start with. But you know, that might then soon become apparent. Actually, there's yeah. no need to be afraid. Um, so the question is, and I'm forming it in my mind as I'm saying it. By the way, um, yeah. is you know how how can do you know do people? Oh, I don't know, treat you differently or do people expect different things from you because you're a disability? I don't, they don't expect things differently. They accept if it's different that that might be because of a disability, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's flipped in a way. Yeah. But I'm a DJ. I'm there to do a job. Mm. I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you that end result, just like somebody that 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 can walk. Yeah. So I turn up at at an event. I have somebody uh, driving me about because I can't drive, mm-hmm. and I have somebody setting me up. So I talk to people in the room and I ask uh, what they want, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because I very much. Um, I turn my my attention to the customer because a lot of DJs that I know will turn up with a set list and that's what they plan and that's what they, they will play. Mm-hmm. Things might change. I, I tailor the party to that customer or to that customer's friends, etc, etc. Um. Yeah, so I I don't let my disability get in the way in terms of delivery. Brilliant, brilliant. And let's kind of rewind to the 23rd of March. Your business pretty much closes, as you've said, your business closes down. Yeah. Um, what's the future for BJK Entertainment Limited? You know, what, what are you doing going forward? Because... I'm guessing this isn't going to stop you. You've still got plans, and you've already alluded to that. Yeah. So what is kind of version 2.0 of BJ Kalem's Entertainment so, 2.0, I've kind of... Do you know where, like, you kind of just sit on, on, a, on a stall and you think, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait, and I'm just going to just carry on as normal. Mm-hmm. That ain't happening. That ain't happening with my business at all. I've I've had time to sit and uh, twiddle my thumbs and I'm launching. I'm doing exactly the same as what I used to, but I'm also doing some other stuff on top. So I'll do all what I said earlier with all the discos and stuff. You come to me and you can have your party, no problem at all. (laughs) You want to do your own party? If you want to, if you want to hire equipment, that that that'll be a thing. So I I can come to you, to, to your venue, give you some some setup, set it all up, and you you might have a best mate who who who's a DJ, not a problem at all. Mm-hmm. I can hire you the equipment with a deposit, with a with a deposit, and then obviously the the delivery fee, etc., etc., on top. Mm-hmm. We we might be in lockdown. I'm not going to put dates on it, but for another six months, for argument's sake, you've got a five year old kid that wants to party. It's got at the moment we're up to six people. I think it is that. Yeah. After, after that's it. We're recording it on the ninth of June. Six people at the moment. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's about six six or so. 
But then I'm like, so what I'm doing now is I'm thinking, right, we're going to be locked down for, let's call it six months. What can I do? Party in a box. So everything you need as a dad for your five-year-old, ten-year-old kid, I'm sending you everything you need in a box to do a house party. I will then also, um, you can either do that with your own music, with the stereo, etc. But I also, going back to the equipment to hire, I can also hire you a portable speaker. And I've got portable lights now as well, which I can either put on a bookshelf or I can put on a tripod in the corner for you. I say me, I meant my helper, but you know yeah, I mean, yeah. the yeah. company. Um, I'm also thinking long term, uh, when this is all lifted and we can all celebrate again and we can all go back to what is going to be the new normal, we're going to have BJK Entertainment Limited um, presents the lockdown after party. So nice. I'm... Because my um, because my business goes from Staffordshire down to Wiltshire and Somerset, because that I don't like to add on petrol for people. People don't like to add on. People don't like to see add on costs. So the, within that area, I can keep my prices to what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm that's about six different counties within that bracket. So I'm doing six six lockdown after parties, one, one one per county, and we're going to go all out, and we're going to um, bring everybody in, and we're going to ticket it. Lots of people aren't, aren't going to be able to afford lots of, of money, so we're keeping the price down as two. Uh, we're keeping the price down as well to keep people to keep it affordable. Because I don't want to, I don't want to make it so people can't afford to come, because no, they bring them back to work at the time. I love it. I love that idea. And do you know what? It's one of those things that if you hadn't have said it, that's one thing that you would have, that should have been suggested to you because you've got a reach that so many people would love to have with kind of the geographical locations. Yeah. Do you know what? It's time to celebrate. So I love that idea. Love that idea. Um, we've sadly come to the end of the podcast for now, uh, but we'll catch up again another time. Um, before we finish off, there's two things I'd like to ask you. And I ask every one of you, my guests the same question at the end. Yeah. And that is, what is your final thought? So what is the one takeaway you want the listener um, to go away and either start doing, start implementing, or have a different view on it? So Ben... To finish off the show, what's your final thought? My final thought would be don't worry about disability. So you're from my point of view right now, you're 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 fit and healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but you don't know what's what's around the corner. So my real final final thought is you can do anything with any disability. Even if you lose the use of your arms and legs, you've still got a brain. Still put it to use. I've had to adapt what I would do to do what I do, but it's done stop me. And that's why I wanted to get you on the show. So thank you very much, Ben, for that final thought and for the whole interview. If people wanted to find more information about you and your business, how can they? This is your chance to throw out any social media links or website details. So, um, at the moment, um, I have a website, but I'm uh, constructing it. Nice. That is uh, www.bjkentertainment, without an S, uh, uh, hyphen, ltd.co.uk. Nice, nice. And I'm guessing you're on all the socials as well. I am. Um, 
and I've got to be honest with you, I've got um, my account deactivated yesterday for um, apparently spamming because it was my birthday yesterday. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, let you know that one, I'm afraid, because I don't know what's happening with my account right, right, right now. <laughs> I tend to say you'll probably have a seven-day ban, and then you'll be okay for when this show airs. But anyway... I've, um, I've already had a 30-day ban, so I think it. I think we're... Uh, you've heard it here first. This could be the first person who's banned from Facebook um, on the Grow Show. Ben, thank you so much. Please, everyone, check out his website, um, and let's have you on the show again, you know, in about a year's time when we can look back at it and ha- talk about lockdown parties and go from there. But Ben, thanks for your time today and take care, buddy. Absolutely no problem at all. Thank you very much.